Hello and welcome to Rebel Metals, your one-stop channel for all things RC and crafting. Uh, today we're going to be doing part two of the uh, QNAM uh, Nova build. And today we're going to be focusing on what I call the standard installation. Uh, this is what you would traditionally find in an RC plane where you have three wires going to um, going between the the the, uh, the receiver and the servos or any of the objects. So uh, in the previous videos, we laid the uh, cable on its side and just used this as a signal wire connector. Today we're going to be doing a standard configuration. This is uh, important because it'll probably work with any radio out there. As they say at Hobby King, it's kind of the dummy, uh, the, 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 the dummy installation. However, um, uh, you, you do need to have, like, if you have an old Spectrum 5, I'm pretty sure that will work with this as well. So there's a lot of inexpensive radios that you can get on the market and make this work well. So let's get moving and uh, let's take a look at uh, what the big difference is. The first thing you notice is that I needed to get two jumper wires and Hobby King suggests that you rip out the uh, jumper wires that go to the uh, pins on the bottom. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea because hey, at some point you may need them. That's why I got, uh, I, have, I have parts and one of the parts I always have are these jumper wires. This is what is traditionally used for most multi-rotors uh, to uh, jump between the uh, flight controller and the uh, receiver. So I added uh, two of the uh, two of the uh, jumper wires uh, to this configuration. So let's take a closer look. Okay, let's take a closer look at setting up the standard mode. And I'm going to unplug all this here. Okay, so now we have our uh, we have our receiver here. And now what we want to do is we want to plug everything into our radio. And I'm going to move this around here. I work this way. This is my servo side. This is my motor side. And this is my power. So the power I've been putting in channel 8, which is down here. And the ground is on the bottom. So that is my power. And let me just make sure ground is at the bottom. Now, for uh, hooking this up, you simply take the first channel off the flight controller and you simply plug it into the first channel on your radio, making sure you respect the grounds. I'm just going to unplug this power for a minute. Then you take the second channel off your uh, flight controller, plug it into the second. Take the third and so on and plug it in down the line just as you would with an airplane, hooking it up to servos. And you have the power feed and the ground on every connection. That makes it simple so um, you don't have to second guess. The big difference is, is once you have the four in, um, that is the uh, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder, you then have to put in one more of these now you can just put in a single pin okay but really there's a three wire connection here that hooks up to the uh to the auxiliary five six and seven we're now just going to run that across the the uh servo channel five six and seven on the receiver okay and that's going to give us um five channels uh that's going to give us channel five six and seven so we end up doing like something similar that we did on the uh, on the first video that was the default that we ended up actually having to put a cable on its side to get the uh, extra channels. Uh, so this here is the standard setup connection uh, and of course don't forget we always got to plug in our power and we're using channel 8 for power and obeying the ground rules. And away we go. That's it. Now I'll take a look at the software and uh, we'll take a little bit closer video. I'll show a bit of a diagram and show you exactly how this, uh, how this operates in more detail with the diagram. Then we'll go into the Mission Planner program and that'll be it for this configuration. Okay, here's a quick uh, review from, uh, if you remember the previous video, uh, we're simply going to be mapping our, uh, our cables 
a one to one for each of the channels one two three four aileron elevator throttle and rudder and we still need to lay one down on its side so that we have the auxiliary channels at least auxiliary channel number five so we can uh, put in our flight modes as always we're not going to be concerned about the uh, indicators and gps okay uh, as in the uh, previous videos uh, one of the first things we need to do is uh, connect up our uh, our quad our controller to the uh, laptop and then we're going to be going into our uh, we're going to be moving into our uh, initial setup again uh, no need or we should not be going anywhere and making any other changes uh, because the flight controller is already pre-configured we just want to make sure that our radio is working so let's go up to uh, initial setup and then select mandatory hardware get out of here mandatory hardware and then we're going to go to radio calibration and as before uh, you're going to have to but this is a straight mapping uh, if uh, if you had not done the, the the first setup all these controls should actually be working uh, as soon as you go in without any need to remap because we did a pin to pin coordination of aileron uh, elevator thr throttle and rudder which corresponds to the default uh, on this radio uh, however as before uh, you should always go in and do the um, do the calibration uh, and um, make sure that your sticks are properly calibrated uh, setting them all to uh, the midpoints and then pushing them all around so that those little red bars go to the full extents to min and max uh, on uh, just to make sure that uh, you're getting your full range of controls and then when you're done just uh, click uh, when done and now we're going to go down to the uh, flight modes and we're just going to click our switch to make sure that we are uh, clicking the return to land stabilize mode and loiter so when you're moving your channel 5 stick that's the one that should be there although there's many more functions we won't be discussing them at this time uh, we'll save that uh, to uh, for a later video okay now that we've seen the uh, the first two videos the default and now the standard installation um, if you have any of the later uh, radios uh, you're probably going to have something that's programmable uh, my recommendation is, is to go with the uh, default, which is uh, which can be seen in part one of the videos. Uh, this seems like a, a lot of work. Um, however, if you don't have a programmable radio, uh, this is the only way that you're going to get this to work. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this series, uh, taking a look at uh, the installation of the um, of the of the receiver into the. Um, QNAM Nova, or if you have a Shearson CX-20, the same thing. Uh, we're now going to move on to CPPM, uh, or PPM. Uh, that's the, the, the reason I say that for last is that that's the mode I'm going to be using uh, because it's only one wire uh, uh, to, to control everything. So it kind of works out best for me. So uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this video. And I look forward to seeing you next time at Emerald Meadows. And as always, Please subscribe uh, if you enjoy this video so uh, we can make more. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.